Okay, this might be a follow-up on my saga with the uh, the little Stoneworks Cub lockback. Um, and it's because uh, shortly after talking about these online with uh, the folks at SMKW, uh, I was looking at one of the uh, posts they had put up on their uh, web page. And uh, the guy who puts up most of the stuff for SMKW is uh, the guy named T.C. Barnett. In any case, uh, they were showing some picture of a knife, and in that picture, they had a picture of a new SMKW sticker. And I made a comment about something like, I'm not sure about the knife, but I could really use one of those stickers. And um, and T.C. Barnett uh, commented back uh, uh, with a LOL, and I said, if you liked me, you would send me one of these stickers. And then uh, a day later, he got a note saying, hey, is this your address? And I said, yep, that's my address. And sure enough, uh, well, he sent me the little monkey sticker. But not only did he send me the monkey sticker, he sent me basically a pretty good swag pack. So I got a new one of their uh, uh, cleaning cloths. Uh, this is like, I, I've got, a, I've had about four or five of these. And I do use them if you've ever seen them. They get kind of worn out. Here's uh, one of my older ones that I have. Uh, it, it, you can see it's it's kind of been used and there's even cuts in there from wiping the blades and everything else so I do use them and they're really pretty good cloths so I like it and I also like the uh, the the old sticker this is one of the earlier stickers that they used to use uh, and it's in the center of their uh, cleaning rags so that's pretty cool but then there was all this other stuff that came in the pack and so some of uh, I've seen it before, you know, there are stickers that I actually mentioned, like, you know, I, I could uh, go without ever getting another one of those stickers. So a couple of those are in there. So I think that might have been uh, poking a little fun at me. But there's also all sorts of other stuff in there. So I'm going to show that real quick. Uh, so pretty good swag pack and some stuff uh, you can't get unless you order a certain kind of knife or something. So that was pretty cool. Um, and uh as you can see here, not one, but I got like three or four. I got five of those uh, monkey stickers, so that's pretty cool. I, I'm glad. I got uh, a bunch more monkey stickers, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh got this one already, but it was cool to see again. This one you rarely see anymore, so it was really nice to get another one of these. Um I got another couple Bigfoots, so the Bigfoots showed up. I got the uh, this one here, which I like, uh, with the uh, the stag. This was one for fall. Then we got the, looks like winter or something of that nature. I have never seen this one, so this one was kind of new and cool. Kind of like a volcano. Might work really well for the volcano club. Who knows? Um, I think this is if you get something from Stanley... Got one for wee knives, so maybe soon I'll need to buy a wee knife. Uh, blades are king, which is cool. Got another narwhal, which is cool. And here's another one I've never seen before, and that is uh, basically uh, uh, T.C. Barnett before he got his hair cut. So S-M-K-W. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And he's got that uh, little uh, Kershaw, whatever that one is, I think. Is that by Kershaw or is that by, uh, you guys out there know what that knife is. That's a popular knife though. SMKW, uh, red, white, and blue. K&F, which is cool. Uh, this is the one that I said, if I had never seen another one of these, it'll be too soon. So I got another knife, so that's pretty funny. Um, and then, uh. Not sure what this is, but it's a thermos, which is kind of neat. Civivi, I don't have a Civivi, so maybe I'm going to need to pick up a Civivi. Um, don't know what the the bear, the flying bear with the crown. I'm not sure about that one. And then uh, I believe this is a Civivi. Maybe somebody else can uh, let me know for sure. Pretty cool though. And uh, what else did I get? Oh. MKM, and this is one of those uh, uh, one of those packages that you can stick to stuff with Velcro, so that's pretty cool. 
MKM made in Italy. I have uh, knives uh, from Mercury. I think Mercury is now part of MKM. I, and there is an MKM knife that I'm looking at picking up, so I might have to grab that pretty soon. And then uh, here is a Kershaw Challenge coin. Next level. And uh, I only have one Kershaw, but I have bought like about four or five Kershaw leaks, and I keep giving them away. So I definitely need to pick up a Kershaw leak for myself. So... I won't feel so bad uh, having the Kershaw Challenge coin. But the other two cool stickers, and I saw these, and it's like, wow, perfect. Um, the Spyderco uh, stickers. Uh, I don't know if they realized it or not, but I have had um, some Kershaw, I'm sorry, some Spyderco stickers on my eBay uh, uh, to buy list forever, and I keep passing on them because I just didn't want to spend six bucks for a Spyderco sticker. But now I've got two Spider Co stickers too, so that's pretty cool, and that's uh, money saved. And so, all in all, uh, just really happy to see such a terrific little swag pack. Now I know a lot of people are going like, really? They just sent you a bunch of stickers for all the stuff that you did for them? And it's like, no. To me, this is really great. This is uh, I I'm not looking for free knives or anything from them, and these stickers. The only way you normally get these kind of stickers is with an order and you don't know what sticker you're going to get or anything else. And the fact that they were nice enough to send me five of, a, of the monkey stickers uh, just really made my day. I was just happy to see those. But then these uh, Spider Co stickers were like a big bonus. And uh, so many other stickers I've never seen. Plus challenge coins, you just... They're not that easy to come by, so it's really cool to get the challenge coin and all this other stuff. So it's stuff you don't normally get, which is pretty cool. I was very happy with all of it, and uh, I'm really happy to have received it. So in any case, thought I'd share that with you. Uh, I know, again, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but it was a big deal to me. Oh, and I missed the sticker. Don't know what knife that is either. Oh. We says so right there. We I think I've only got no. Do I have a we? I don't even have a we. Maybe I need to go we. <laughs> anyway, let you go. Talk to you again soon. <coughs> Just a rundown of some uh, recent purchases uh, from eBay. Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and well, the first one here, I'm not sure if it was Dollar Store or Dollar Tree, whatever it was, it's the Dollar Knife or the Buck and a Quarter Knife, uh, right there, Tool Bench Hardware, Folding Knife, I already did, I think I've already done a video on this, uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but uh, time to open it up. I was joking about it before. Should I keep it in the package? Because will I devalue it once I open it? You know, it'll go from a buck and a quarter to 75 cents. Anyway, let's open it up in there. This is a, an interesting knife I got. This is an, a Gill um, Marlin Spike knife. Really a funky one. But anyway, I'll have to do a video on this sometime in the future. Look at that. See, it's got a safety thing. So you can't actually accidentally cut yourself won't be able to use this one for all the other packages you can see some of the other knives now in the background oh well it does open you just can't poke with it kind of a good thing when you think about it so there's the ooh, look at that got an eagle that thing spins wonder if you can undo it. I bet you can. Can you unscrew it? Look at that. It spins. Okay. Mm. Oh, man. That is not the easiest knife to open. Might have to loosen that up, too. Doesn't look like it can loosen. But it's got enough wobble in there. Look at that blade play. Man, talk about a, a great knife. Anyway. What do you expect for a buck and a quarter? 
And then uh, this one, I got this one on eBay. The Panther 2. It's a lockback. How big is this thing closed? Probably four and a half inches. Oh uh, no, almost uh, four and three quarter inches closed. Clip blade. You got a uh, cross guard there. And I think this is chrome vanadium. Is that what it is? Vanadium stainless steel Japan. Kind of an interesting shape. Lock is back there. Man, that lock is very delicate. Any pressure in that blade is loose. So not the best lock in the world. Anyway, I uh, bought it because, well, it looked kind of cool. Late night impulse buy. The Panther 2. Yeah, man, this thing weighs a ton. Definite wobble. What do you expect? A nice probably from the 1980s. And then uh, we see here, before we get to the first mate, we got this one here. This is the Cheese Master. This is a three-bladed, 111-millimeter uh, knife. As you can tell from the name Cheese Master, it has the uh, cheese cutting blade on there. Then it has a main blade, which is the same as the cheese knife. You got the serrated main blade or half serrated main blade, which locks. Got the corkscrew, and you have, in this case, the uh, the toothpick and the tweezers. I think the cheese knife just has the toothpick. Let me see real quick. Okay, it depends on which cheese knife you get. The original cheese knife that has the um, the red slide on there. See, that's the cheese blade. Here is the main blade that has all the stuff written on it. Also, more of a full serrated blade. This was the first one that was uh, made on commission and then later was made by, uh, was issued straight out. But the, the second cheese knife has the gray slide and it has toothpick and tweezers. So this one has toothpick and tweezers, but it also has a third blade, which is a little fork and a bottle opener. So that's pretty cool. So you can open, uh, uh, beverages with a that have a bottle cap or a corkscrew with the cheese master so it's a pretty cool knife and you can kind of guess why I ended up buying it so now I've got all three cheese knives like I needed all three cheese knives uh, that's what happens when you collect all right before we do the marbles first mate we have one knife hiding behind there and this is by case and this is uh, a medium toothpick uh, in the Green Apple Smooth Bone, or Green Apple Bone Smooth, medium toothpick. Uh, this one just came out, uh, so 2023 um, case medium toothpick. And I, I just, I saw the green bone, it's like, yeah, man, I gotta get that one. So I went ahead and grabbed it. I'll give a more full review this uh, on this one in the uh, near future, but here we have it. Here you have it. Wonderful. Uh, I love that bone. That green smooth bone looks really good. Um, and it's about the same on both sides, which is also really good. And uh, I like that uh, new shield they have going on there. Let's see if we can get it better. You got the black enamel behind the uh, case double X and an oval shield. So it looks pretty good. It looks really good, actually. Finish is really nice. There you have it. Got to wipe off the blade a little bit. Got some fingerprints on there. But a uh, really good looking knife. I like it. I'll be talking more about this one in a in a very near future. So that's uh, the crazy Casey Green Apple Medium Toothpick. Uh, I wonder if they got that in, a, in like a mini canoe or a butter bean. And finally, let's take a look at the... Uh, First Mate Nautical Knife by Marbles. I'm going to open that up with this uh, Eagle Eye by Frost. That worked a whole lot better than the gill. But then this has a point and the gill did not. Um, this is like, uh, I've got at least six of these uh, patterns of knives. Knives and with this style of a uh, handle um, and I have 
at least three or four that have exactly these blades on here. As a matter of fact, this is the first one I ever bought. This one is by uh, Maxim. And, well, you can see there. Looks pretty close to the same, huh? Zero centimeters to uh, five centimeters. And then flip it over. And we got the inches. Stainless steel inches, two inches. The difference is they... Uh, is that... That might be engraved in there. The U.S. might be engraved in there. Obviously, though, the knife is actually made in China. The... Uh, Shackle does not move nearly as easy as the one on the Maxim does. It might break in over time. The shackle does not, I'm sorry, I should probably call that uh, the bail because we have a shackle key on here. Don't want to confuse everything. Could also call it the, uh, uh, I could also call it a clevis. That's the other word, clevis. And that was like a two minute brain fart, I swear. In any case, um, the reason it's called a shackle, though, is, well, here's a shackle. And, and the, as you can see, it's pretty much just like a shackle. You've got a pen going through there and then the thing attached to it. Um, what we have here is the shackle key. That's right down the middle here. And you put that on here and you turn. Well, you're not going to turn it that way got to have it setting the right way and then you can turn this you break the shackle open remove the pin so that's what this is that's the funny loopy thing in the middle here that's why it's called a shackle key and this can handle some pretty big shackles I guess this is the the portion that you're actually loosening though not up here in any case that's the shackle key and that's why you can actually have much smaller things or much smaller openings and use it for a shackle key um, this knife has the same problems that so many of these knives have. You see what they've done here? They've got both of these. This looks like the, uh, flathead screwdriver, but they put two of them on there. So your screwdriver has suddenly become worthless. The Maxim came the same way. And what I did was I ground down one of them so that I ended up with a screwdriver on it. And that's what I'm going to have to do with this marbles also, is grind one of them down. I'll just pick one of them. Some people tried to uh, convince me that, no, that's there so you can uh, better support the uh, blades. If that were true, then you would have it all the way around on all three uh, blades, or at least, or you would have the main blade going through it or something like that. No, that's just, um, that's just a mistake. And here's the main blade, your sheep foot blade. Made in China, the MR405 Marbles quality knife. Not too bad. And then finally, we got over here the uh, can opener. Um, and I tell you what, the uh, this really needs some oiling. It's an oil the joints knife and Trust me, you definitely need to oil this one when it shows up. I wanted to show you something with this, though. The uh, You got the shackle key here. Um, I think that you can sometimes pop a, a beer bottle with the shackle key. Uh, I'm not going to try that right now. When I get around to doing a real video on this, I will. But what I wanted to show you is uh, the uh, can opener. You can also usually use it. To break the shackles too. Not always, but sometimes. Depends on uh, how well the can opener fits. But you can get it in there and break it. Depending on how tight your uh, shackle is. And how small your shackle is. Just tighten that up as much as I can. Alright, that's pretty tight. And then you can just... Do the same thing with the can opener. And the reason I'm mentioning that is what a lot of people say is, well, just use your Marlin spike. Uh, but if you use your Marlin spike in there and, and try and tighten and loosen that, you're going to put a lot of nicks in your Marlin spike. And uh, and that is going to cause problems when you start uh, 
using it to untie knots and stuff because all those nicks can uh, cause your uh, your line to fray and you don't want a frayed line so if you don't have a shackle key use your can opener before you use your marlin spike and uh, main blade oh something else i noticed uh yeah, this is kind of cool too as long as i'm uh, just wandering around now now this isn't going to work with just about every marlin spike knife out of there but it works with quite a few of the camillus knives i have and i don't know if it's because somebody else already did it or not but you can actually get the uh the little uh bale that you use for uh opening you know that uh that um the lock for your marlin spike this can actually fit on these two and you can actually tighten and loosen them with that too so just something to think about there's a lot of ways you can loosen up a mar uh, loosen up a shackle key without resorting to screwing up your uh, marlin spike um, but anyway thought I'd show you that and uh, oh this one here oh come on. man this one this one has everything locking on it let's see the shackle key on here see this is a much smaller shackle key on the gill but it can go in there and it can tighten it up pretty good too you got a nice little line cutter on there too it's got a uh, that looks like for a quarter inch uh, uh, nut and it's also a cap lifter and then you've got a uh, screwdriver tip there and a marlin spike and the funky blade that I showed and that also locks in place here too anyway now I'm just wa really wandering all over the place I gotta do some more videos on my marlin spike collection I've got so many of them anyway I'm gonna let you go now just thought I'd show you some of the new knives that I got in and then I kind of got sidetracked uh, talk to you again soon hope you enjoyed the video